Now, by the way, this technique is in no way cheating. It's absolutely a great technique to make sure that your portrait will look the way you want at the end. Welcome back to the Paintable Pro channel. My name is David Bilibo. I am the lead instructor at Paintable. And in this video, I'll help you to paint portrait in your own style with five of my best tips, hacks, techniques, basically things that I do on my own portrait. By the way, the One Way Portrait Challenge starts next week. If you Yay! don't want to miss it, I'll be talking about all the details on how to register and get the free masterclass at the end of the video. So be sure to watch the end, the middle as well, and the beginning. Just watch the whole video, but I'll be talking about the One Way Portrait Challenge at the end. Okay, the first thing that I do on my own portrait to add style could be considered a hack and it's to modify the reference picture from the get-go. All right, let me show you how I would modify uh, the reference picture that I have here. So this is the reference picture I'm going to use. Uh, it's a reference picture from Rachel Bradley. I'll make sure to put a link of her reference picture in the description below. Uh, but basically, this is an already really nice picture, but I think that I could add just a little bit more touches of uh, contrast and color to help me create something a little bit more stylized. And I already did it. This is what I'm going to go with. Uh, and as you can see, this is very rough. Uh, it's not perfect. I'm going to show you every layers. So the first thing that I did is I added added adjustment layer of brightness contrast to add a little bit more contrast. So right here, then I added hue and saturation to add a little bit more saturation to the tone, which also will uh, show the different red and orange of our skin tone. So I wanted to have that as well. Then I added the curves. And for the curves, it's just going to add um, just a little bit more the details into the values. Matter of fact, if you open the, the curves here, what I did is I placed a bunch of points and I kind of modified just them a little bit. And as you can see, when you move them from, from up to bottom, it's going to just move one value. Then I added a, uh, it's called in Photoshop, a uh, filter, a photo filter, added to blue to just make sure that the tone will be just a little bit cooler. Then I added the purple with a color blending mode and a little bit of red on her skin and that's it. So now you can see the before and after. And so this is a, a hack that you can use is to modify your reference picture before doing your illustration. This way you're going to have something that it's stylized from the get go. Now, by the way, this technique is in no way cheating. It's absolutely a great technique to make sure that your portrait will look the way you want at the end. So have some fun with reference picture and don't feel bad about it. Number two is a technique that is super quick yet super effective and it's to change the color of your sketch lines. This is super simple yet will add a lot of style to illustration. So what you want to do is once you have your basic flat colors, in this case I just added the flat color of the portrait and the background, you want to take your line and in Photoshop what you can do is to just click the lock pixels right here and then decide of a color that would fit the uh, color scheme of your illustration. Now I have a lot of pink and a lot of purple. So my thinking is probably something in between pink, purple-ish, dark-ish, and I'm going to fill up those lines. Having just that little touch of color will add a lot to illustration. Now I have the line on multiply here, but I could check if normal looks better or if any other blending mode looks better. I'm gonna keep it to multiply for now, but having that little touch of color will really add a little style to illustration. And then from there, well, you need to continue obviously rendering it. And for that, I got more hacks. All right, number three is to paint with shapes. Now it's super common to start a painting a portrait and to want to paint the anatomy and the, the, the beautiful smooth rendering and the details and all of that. But if you start with actually basic geometric shapes, really, it's really going to help you to add some style to illustration. I'm gonna show you what I mean. Now, when you're looking at the reference picture, you can see a lot of shapes, like the nose could be a triangle. I'm also seeing a kind of a triangly shape on the, the front of the face. There's the shape of the jaw here. All of those things can be simplified with their own value and their own flat colors when you start your rendering. All right, so I'm gonna make sure that I'm under my line work here. I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm gonna start with, you know, the basic shape that I'm seeing just using a hard edge brush like this. And I'm seeing kind of a triangle like I was seeing for the nose. So I'm gonna take a pinkish value and create a triangle shape for the nose. And I'm gonna create a new layer and this time I'm gonna create kind of the jaw here. I'm gonna to go towards the orange a little bit more. Always changing your, your hue here is gonna be super important. I'm also seeing a kind of a triangle right here in a kind of a pinkish 
I'm also seeing a very bright value here that could be like bright purplish in another kind of triangle. And I'm seeing a lot more shapes, but this is already a good start. And what I want to do basically is to kind of not erase those shapes completely when I'm going to start doing the rendering. Okay. So basically what I'm doing is just trying to simplify things with shapes and I could add more. I could add the one to the shoulder and the neck, and I'm probably going to do that in a second, but this is just an example for you to show that what I can do is simplify things with shapes. And then later on, I'll be able to kind of render them and soften the edges, but not too much. So for now, I'm going to add a little bit more flat values here to add a little bit more of my colors, like the lips, the eyes, the hair, and all of that. And then in the next hack, I'll show you what I'm going to do with those shapes. And so as you can see here, what I did is really just basic shape. And obviously this is looking pretty rough, but you'll see in the next tip, I'm going to start just rendering a little bit more of those shape without losing them. And it's going to start taking form. All right, technique number four is something that really goes well with technique number three. We started with geometric shapes, and now we want to make sure that the rendering of the portrait is not going to erase the work that we did in the previous step. Basically, we want to keep the geometric shape as apparent as possible, yet we also want to blend the edges a little bit. I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. We've been rendering kind of the portrait with hard shape and just geometric shapes and all of that. And this is great. It's already looking stylized to me. I actually really like the direction it's going. The trick here or the hack is to not over blend, is to not make all of this soft and mushy. And I see a lot of that online. Usually when you start rendering, you would use a soft round brush like this one and you would start to kind of just kind of mix all of those colors together until it becomes just too much blended together. A little bit like, like this. And if this is a style, this is great. But what you've been doing is just kind of erasing all the style that we've been working on. So what you want to do is to render it by keeping those hard edges as much as possible without looking just too rough. So obviously I'm going to take it from here and I'm going to blend those shape, but keep them so we can still see those different unique shape. Now, as you can see, I've been blending a little bit the edges, but it still look like you can see those geometric shapes and hard shapes that I did in the previous step. And this is really the key of it. You want to add some style to it. And if you start blending it all, it's all going to disappear. So you don't want to do this. And you'll see as I'm going to continue blending this, I'm also going to add more shapes. Basically, I'm getting very inspired by one of my favorite artists, JC Leyendecker. I'm sure a lot of you guys already know him, but basically what he was doing is to stylize a lot his shading ingredient and the rendering of his characters or objects or really anything with small parts of ge geometric shapes. So that's what I'm going to do with this one, or at the very least, that's what I'm trying to do with this one. All right, tip number five or step number five of the things that I like to do to add style to my painting is to add my signature or favorite special effects. Now there's a lot out there that can be done. The one that I really like to do is chromatic aberration. All right, so I push illustration a little bit more as you can see, and it's time for the fifth hack which is to add your favorite special effects. Now, obviously there's a ton of special effects. The one that I'm going to add today is chromatic aberration. It's the one that I absolutely love to add and I have a special way to do it. I actually made a video about it. I'll make sure to put a link of that video in the description of this video. But in the meantime, I'll show you on this illustration what I do when I add chromatic aberration. And it's super simple. I'm just adding basically a few lines of the chromatic aberration colors, which I already have here. They are the blue, red, green, uh, that's magenta. That's another blue. I guess that's science. That's not blue. That's blue and that's yellow. And then you want to pick up the one that you prefer. Uh, I think in this case, I'm going to go with the scient and the magenta or maybe the blue and maybe some yellow. I don't know. I'm going to try a few things and I'll see how it looks. Uh. 
And that's it, you don't have to add more than this, just a little touch of one special effect that you like to repeat on your art is going to give that signature style for your own style. Actually, in this case, it's one of those techniques that a lot of people are using, chromatic aberration being everywhere these days, but I still love it. <laughs> Now, obviously, all of those tips and techniques and hacks are worth nothing if you don't have a portrait to work with. And you are in luck because, like I was saying at the beginning of the video, the one week portrait challenge starts next week. And we have a masterclass that we give for free for an entire week. So if you don't want to miss this, I'm going to place a link on the screen somewhere here, plus in the description where you can register the course. And the masterclass starts next week on Monday. So you don't want to wait too long to register. Go ahead, save your spot, and I'll see you in there. And for the rest, happy painting, guys.